start the afternoon session now with Omar Morando. Omar, all yours. Okay, thank you. So I, I hope that the OT cybersecurity argument is a good topic to restart after the lunch. Uh, so uh, thanks so much for your presence here. My name is Omar Morando. I'm the head of cybersecurity OT domain and uh, innovation lab. I uh, come from Italy and the company is Ababa Security. It's an Italian company focused on cybersecurity services in uh, OT, IT, and automotive domain. I have more than 20 years of experience with the SCADA system, PLC, remote I.O., DCS, and so on. And I have also good experience in, in automotive domain. I'm a researcher and penetration tests are a developer of a SCADA exploit. It's a framework that developed targeting DOT domain and PLC is mostly finding in Europe, European market. You can reach me by email or Twitter if you want. So uh, I would like to start with a question, very simple, basic question. Why are ICS being attacked? Very simple. Uh, I, I don't ask you to, to answer uh, because after lunch it's not easy to, to restart. I suggest on some topics, okay? The ICS security is a challenge because uh, we have some critical infrastructure. We have energy, power generation, power transportation. We have telecommunication, transport. We have water treatment, but also we have some manufacturing companies that are interested for APT, for attackers. And if we read some report, one is from IBM last year, uh, nearly the 80% of the analyzed companies infrastructure don't adopt any zero trust strategies. And the cost of the breaches are up than five million dollars. And in the more or less the 30% were by ransomware or uh, destructive attacks. Why ICS are so attractive for APT? We have the cyber threats of K, it's now we, we know very well, unfortunately. We have a digital transformation, Industrial 4.0, that push a lot. Please put IT technology in your plant because it's easy. And we pay to do that. The problem is the vendors, the PLC vendors, have included in the, in the PLC, for example, some website module. You can reach a, a PLC using a browser, very easy. The problem is inside this website, uh, website you don't have the same hardened system that you can have in a, we a real web server. And this is a very big problem. Or credentials are coded inside the PLCs, inside a remote I.O., intelligent remote I.O., for example. And then we have the problem of compliance. So the story starts from Stuxnet. I don't want to bore you with Stuxnet. This is a very known attack, a very known malware, but I, I take the opportunity of Stuxnet to put some topics, important topics. Stuxnet is a malware discovered in 2010, uh, and it, it's important for two important uh, things that I would I will like to underline. The first is, was the first malware targeting OT system, air-gaped OT system, without any kind of connection to internet. The first important topic is that Stuxnet showed to the world that it's possible to have a physical damage using software. This was the second important topic. Stuxnet was based on four zero days on Windows to reach the OT network Siemens S7 300 PLCs based on S7 communication protocol. And what is Technically speaking, interesting on Stuxnet that on the SCADA system, on the control room, no plant anomalies were, was displayed. Why? Because Stuxnet, the malware, was a sort of man in the middle that 
um, damp every single information exchanged by the SCADA system and the PLCs and perform and do a reply attack against the SCADA system, sending fake data. I will show you a real case during my demo after my, present, after my boring slide presentation. Okay? And this is very important. And the physical damage was uh, conducted by the malware changing the internal registries of the PLCs and changing the speed of rotation, the rotation speed of the centrifuge up to the mechanical damage, mechanical failure, reaching the resonant frequencies. But Stuxnet is not the only important malware in the story in your T domain. Another one is Industroyer. Industroyer is a malware uh, that was, the first attack was in 2016, and the target of Industroyer, sorry, the target of his Industroyer is power plant generation, power generation plant. Why? Because uh, Industroyer use a typical protocol that are used in this domain, this sign, this um, name, are typical protocol used in, for example, ABB, uh, DCS control system, or other PLCs commonly used in power generation plant. And Industrial was able to destroy completely the power, plan, uh, the power plant. But malware is a software. It means that we have an update last year. Industrial V2, important tape, update, a new reborn uh, malware in Destroyer in April of last year. This very recent situation. The third and the final malware in OT that I would like to show you is a Triton. Triton. So in, in our production plant, you know that we have the emergency button, the red button. If, the, if we have some critical situation, we can push on the red button and we stop the plant. We hope. There is a company that is specialized, one of the most important companies specialized to produce PLC, is secure PLC, I'll call it, is Triconex. Triconex is the worldwide leader in safety instrumented system. The PLC dedicated to stop for the emergency situation, to control the emergency and to put all the actuator in a safe condition. Triton is a malware specifically developed for Triconex SIS system. It means that if you push your red button, nothing happens. The problem is that the consequence could be absolutely catastrophic. Because imagine you have a chemical plant or a ship transport, for example. You push the red button and nothing happens. It means that we can have a very important destroyed consequence of this action. We are, we, we, we are in, in a safe condition now. We, we don't need red button. So the long story last year are, are very impressive. Uh, a lot of company that are targeted by APT in, I, in OT and ICS domain. Very important story. So what's first question is, what is inside an ICS is a very, very basic. Starting from left or better, starting from level zero to the level of the control, we have the sensor. Sensor is a, is a um, is a, a component that is able to transform a physical value in a digital signal. Actuators is exactly the opposite. It transforms a digital signal in a physical action. Then we have the PLC, the program, programmable logic controller, is the physically is an industrial computer. Uh, in most of the case, inside the PLC, you can find a sort of Linux or Unix based operating system like Wixworks or some specific um, Linux version like Adonis, for example, for Siemens or other uh, operating system like Unit OS for Schneider Electric. It's the pen of the company, but more or less are embedded Unix uh, or Linux system. 
that is able to control in real time some input coming from the sensors and actuate the output uh, or better activate the actuator using the output in real time real time means two or three milliseconds no more then we have HMI. HMI is more or less a touch screen that shows some information to the operator. HMI means human machine interface. It's a, it's a panel control panel that interacts with the operator in order to put and send commands or receive information coming from the plant. Then we have industrial communication protocols. We have more than 150 different protocol, custom protocol in OT domain. Uh, Modbus, TC, Modbus, generally speaking, or Modbus TCP device, net, profi, net, profi, bus, can open, uh, back net, uh, OPC, UA, a long list of industrial protocols that are not so common. Then you have a telecommunication system, and then we have the SCADA system. SCADA system is a software inside that computer. SCADA means a supervisor in control and data acquisition. It means it's a software that is able to to, to view all the plant and uh, interact with the operator, reading the alarm coming from the plant, sending information, storing data, even logging, and so on. In this architecture, we have, from the right to the left, we have the sensors and actuators. We have more than one PLCs, depend of the extension, dimension of the plant. We have some production network with other PLCs, HMI product. We have the SCADA network that control of the plant. And then, thanks to Industry 4.0, but not only Industry 4.0, we have a connection, direct connection in certain case, to the corporate domain. Because we have the production management system, we need to integrate or interact with the sales guy. When the sales guy reach an order, activate the production of the product and so on, the very dynamic situation that require a connection, direct connection from the plant to IT corporate, corporate network. The problem is, in certain case, this network is absolutely flat, without cementation, without firewall, without DMZ, without nothing, okay? Now, after we have also the edge computing that emphasize this critical information. Another question. Is it hard to attack an ICS system? Please say no. No, it's not, it's not. It's very easy to attack an ICS system. Why? Because uh, first of all is uh, the life cycle of the plant. In IT domain, we change our PC every, I don't know, three, four, five years. We change the technologies, we change the license, the ADR license, we, ha we change a lot of things every year or every two years. In a production plant, we have the same PLC, same architecture, same device for 10, 20, 30, or up to 40 years. It means that you can find a very old PLC in your actual current production plan with the old version of firmware. Why? Because the first objective is availability. Don't touch anything if it works. I'm in production plan. I have to produce. I don't have to update. I have to produce. And one day of stop in some couples for some customer means one million dollars by day. I cannot stop my PLC to update the firmware because some guy from Sababa, Italy, tell me, please update your PLC. Okay, it's not important, I have to produce. So the problem is the attack surface that, you have, uh, that we can have in ICS, in, in uh, OT plant is absolutely huge. We have interaction from up to down, up down approach, uh, phishing campaign, malware that coming from IT that go down deep, deep to OT level and block my system. But better, attacker are targeting OT system because it's a very 
entry point, very easy entry point to come up and block and ransom and cipher the server of IT corporation. If you don't have a segmentation on the network, I can connect, for example, my maintenance PC that I use usually for office. I use the same PC, I bring my PC, I put my PC on the plant, I connect my PC to the net OT network, I do something, and then I take my PC and go to my office. In this case, I can, I, I can transfer my malware that are targeted to OT network, that is easier, and then come back to IT corporation. This is a typical situation. Or USB. USB are absolutely used in OT domain, and uh, it's the, the, um, the way for Stuxnet in an air gap situation in, 2000, in 2010. How can I find my PLC? This is a showdown. I think you know Shodan. Shodan is a Google search engine for IoT device. You can go on Shodan, you can put in this case Schneider TSX. TSX is the name of the PLCs of Schneider Electric. You can ser search for key Schneider and TSX, and you can find a long list of IP addresses of PLC directly connected on the internet with uh, some uh, information related to the firmware version of the Ethernet communication, firmware version of the project, more details that are absolutely important. Okay, now what I can do, I can open my engineering station, I can put the address of the PLC, I can reach the PLC, I can, if the PLC project is not protected by password, but it's not so important, I can bypass the password, I will, if you want. I can tell you after the, con uh, the conference. Uh, I can read the information, I can read the project inside the PLC, okay? Like I, I can change the behavior of the PLC. I don't know where is the, this PLC, doesn't matter, but the problem is I can reach this product, I can, I, I can easily uh, modify, interact with the PLC directly. The myth of Modbus. Why Modbus? Because Modbus is, a, is a absolutely the most important protocol used in OT domain. It's a very young, it depends on a point of view, a young protocol, uh, for a protocol it's a very old protocol because it's 1979 was developed by Modicon, a, a, a US company, that describe and define the Modbus structure of the protocol. The problem is this protocol is the most common protocol. The 30% of the power of the plant, industrial plant, use Modbus in certain cases. It's a plant, serial communication, TCP communication, Modbus RTU, Modbus Plus, different version, but more or less the same frame structure. And no concept of encryption, no concept of authentication because it's too old, this protocol. Uh, this is a structure of the Modbus, but I don't want to bore you with all the bytes and, uh, that you can find inside. But the problem is this protocol provides you a long list of functionalities that are used by default. And it means that without any encryption, without any authentication process, you can read the manual of the Modbus and do an attack to the PLC, changing the behavior of the PLC using three, four line of Python code I will show you during the demo. The structure of the Modbus TCP is the same structure of the Modbus uh, serial communication models encapsulated in a TCP IP stack, but it's absolutely the same structure of the protocol. And we have different version of the protocol that are integrating using some gateway. It means I have, I don't know, a very simple device that is able to use Modbus on RS485 or RS232 that have to communicate with the Modbus TCP. I have a very simple, a very cheaper gateway that transform, translate the physical, that adapt the, uh, the physical, different physical layer 
and I'm able to interact with this simple device. That's the reason why modulus is very common in an in a OT plant. I will show you how to exploit a vulnerability that uh, was found in 2018 that can create a denial of service, do a denial of service of the PLC. In this case, I'm targeting the Schneider Electric PLC um, that are vulnerable uh, by this, uh, this kind of attack. Uh, there are four family, four type of PLC of Schneider Electric uh, that use uh, a, mm, this kind of uh, function that is called set breakpoint. What, has, what, what, what I mean? Uh, consider when I write a program inside a PLC, it's more or less the same thing that I can do in my desktop. I can put some breakpoint in the memory of the in the PLC memory and then go step by step to see what happened in my production plan. Okay, to, to, to do a debug of the of the application. If you in this case, in the specific case of, uh, of this vulnerability of this uh, Modbus uh, extension protocol, there is a long list of commands that you can use in the Modbus protocol, this uh, is not a public uh, or better, is, is a list that is not coming from the vendor, is a list that we have discovered during the reverse engineering of the protocol. And we discover some undocumented list of command of Modbus uh, Schneider Electric PLCs that you can use. One of these is the set breakpoint on a specific line code, that is the code is a 60, and crafting the breakpoint frame of the Modbus protocol using a very simple line of Python code, you can stop the PLC in a specific uh, portion of memory that stop completely the PLC, and also the commu Ethernet communication of the PLC. It means that the PLC is in a stop, doesn't run, and it is also unreachable. You cannot reach the PLC using the Ethernet communica communication. This could be another problem. You can stop and restart your PLC, and everything restarts again. The problem is, if you have a plant, I don't know, water treatment up to the mountain without any guy that can switch off and, and turn on your PLC, you have to reach your station and then reset your PLC to restart your production situation. And the problem is I have a long plant with, I don't know, 10, 20, 30, 50 or 100 PLCs. I can spread the attack to all the PLCs on the plant. I can stop completely all the plant and the consequence could be very dangerous for the plant and also for, for the business, okay. Uh, before to do that, I would like to show you how to do that in a real case, okay, more or less real case. Uh, I could not bring my, my, I have usually, I use a, a, a real uh, simulator, but the problem is too complicated for, for the air, to transport an airplane. So I have a, a virtual uh, simulator here. And uh, we have this simulator. This is a software that is able to simulate, to emulate the Schneider PLC. Okay, and it is able to emulate the Modicom M580 PLC CPUs by Schneider Electric with a specific CPU, with a specific firmware that is a version 3.10, that is a, the, um, the PLC is very um, actual PLC that is affected by this vulnerability. Here I have SCADA exploits the tools that I developed, but you can write your script by Python, in this case, 
I use SCADASploit in this case. In SCADASploit, I have a long list of, uh, of tools. In this case, I would like to use the Modbus scan. Why? Because, okay, I'm an attacker. Now I, with my PC, I, I'm inside the industrial network, OT network. Be but I don't know how many PLCs I can have in this network. I don't know the version of the PLCs. I don't know the version and the type of PLCs. So I have to discover how many devices ha I have and the version of the PLCs that I have. Using a very simple script in Python or in a language that you prefer, you can discover all the PLCs that you have. In this case, I have one PLC, of course, that is emulated by my software, and the address of the PLC is localhost. So I have to put in my Modbus scan the, the address, remote address. In this case, I have set remote host 170, set airport 20, uh, 5020. Then I can run my Modbus scan, run. Okay, and now I discover I have some important information that are grabbed my Modbus scan tool. In this case, I have vendor name, sorry, powerful microphone. Uh, vendor name, Schneider Electric, Mod, uh, Modbus, uh, uh, sorry, Natural Modules, this, the firmware version that I have here, that are emulated here, but also I have some important information related to the demo, the project name, the version software used to develop this project, the data of the last modified by the user, and the MAC address of the PLCs. This information is absolutely important because why? Because I have the firmware version. I open Google and I can search Modbus, or oh, better, Modicon M580 firmware version 3.10 exploitation. And I'm sure that I can find a long list of possible exploitation of this version of the firmware. Then I have some important and relevant information related to the project in version and the data of the last modified project. It means that there is no one that is changing nothing inside since 2020, for example. No one has updated this software and updated the project. Good. So I can try to exploit this, uh, this PLC using the CV that I show in this presentation. This CV is a specific CV that means if you put a breakpoint in the PLC at the address 00, that is the block memory address of the PLC, the PLC is stopped completely, <laughs> unreachable and completely stopped. So I can craft my packet specify the 00 address and using a very simple script I have a simple tool minus D for denial of service I can send this request and the PLC is absolutely stopped because I reach an invalid breakpoint address, the CPU is in error, and the communication is absolutely stopped. If I try to reach again my PLC, the PLC is not available, is unreachable. Very easy. Uh, how to do that? Very simple code. I have here the DOS attack. Very, I can craft the information and the, the frame of my, of my Modbus protocol. You can read the manual of the Modbus protocol. You can search on Wikipedia of the Modbus protocol. And you can write your specific frame using 
three line of code and bypassing also some request uh, of reservation request typical for mod modicon uh, PLCs. Okay, please don't do that at home. Don't try this at home. So a typical, a typical kill chain of the cyber attack in ICS. When I reach and I'm in my, uh, I connected in my OT network, I start the network scanning to discover all the devices. This is a, an approach of the Stuxnet, more or less, that perform the two and many in the middle and putting the device and the malware between the PLC and the SCADA system, reading all the information exchanged by two, the two devices, dumping all this information in a file in order to do a reply attack against the SCADA system to show sending fake data and then attacking the PLC. In the network, the first step is network scanning using, for example, Modbus scan or writing your specific uh, tools. It's very easy to discover all the devices that you have and grabbing this information coming from the PC. Consider that, that I'm using the native OT protocols. It means it's, it's an active but, but quite passive scanning. It's not dangerous for the PLCs. If you run an map tool in aggressive mode against the PLC, you stop the PLC basically using an map no more because uh, the PLC is not able to reply to all the questions that you are sending, to all the requests that you are sending. Okay? It's not able to do that. But if I'm using a, a native OT protocol, the, for the PLC is a standard request. It answers me, giving me all the information that I need because it seems that I'm the engineering station. So I give you all the information that you ask me. Okay? I have a switch, I have a PLC, I have a HMI, and I have my attacker computer. I put my computer inside the PLC inside the network and using a very basic ARP spoofing in Python are two line of codes. I do a man in the middle attack. I'm sending, I'm, I'm saying to the PLC, I'm an HMI and to the HMI, I'm saying I'm the PLC and using an IP forwarding request, I transfer all the information coming from the HMI to the PLC, coming from the PLC to HMI, reading and dumping all the information because the protocol is, uh, is not encrypted, is in clear text, plain text. So I can read all information exchanged by, by the two devices. Mm -hmm. I can dump this information on the file. This is a very basic line of code to read the information exchanged by the two devices. I can reply the attack now I'm able to stop the to interrupt the communication exchanged by the PLCs and the HMI I can re do a reply attack it means I can sending fake data from my PC to HMI in order to to show on the HMI that everything is is working fine even if I attack the PLCs I will show using a video then I attack the, my my plant, and I, uh, then I stop the PLC using the, um, the denial of service and breakpoint invalid parameters. I show you, instead of using my, my magic case, I have a video that I recorded before, to, before to, to take the plane. In this case, I, I have my SCAD exploit, I run, SCAD exploit, I discover all the devices that I can have in my network. I don't know how many devices I, I can have. So I run a scan for all the network. In this case, I, I'm finding for, I'm searching for five, three different IP addressing. Some devices are not connected, but we can discover two devices. The first is a SCADA controller, HMI, 
And the second one is a PLC. I grab the information related to the firmware, the modules, the MAC address. Why MAC address? Because I want to do a man in the middle, an ARP spoofing. I need the MAC address to, to, to attack the switch and perform an ARP spoofing. After that, I have my plant simulator here. Very nice. I start the process. This is a common process. A, a, a normal process. I have the PLC on the left, I have the HMI on the right, and some LED that show the information. As you can see here, I have all the information coming from the PLC uh, that show what is running, uh, if the process is running well. I start my attack, the sequence of the attack is started. Now I'm in the middle of the two guys here. I started the harp spoofing, I enable the IP forwarding, and I'm reading and sending all the information exchanged by the two devices, and I'm storing this information in a file that I will use for a reply attack. After this learning phase, I dumped all the information in a file that I call it TMP frame 0001.dat, then I load this file and interrupt the communication. Now, PLC and HMI are disconnected, not physically, but logically, and I'm sending fake data to the HMI system. Because I'm receiving the request and I'm sending the transfer, reading the data from the file. Now I'm ready to attack the PLC. I wait the right moment and then in three, two, one, I attack the PLC. And now I'm changing the behavior of the plant. I'm sending, overwriting the data of the PLC. The behavior of the plant is completely changed. But in your HMI system, Everything seems working fine because I'm sending fake data on the, in the other session. I'm still sending fake data. I stopped the PLC. The PLC is stopped, unreachable, is not able to communicate with computer, with other device. But in the HMI system, everything seems to work fine because I'm sending fake data stored before, during my, my man in the middle attack. If I stop my reply attack, also the HMI display show the last data sent. Now also the HMI is stopped. Okay, this is a very simple but typical approach of attack on the ICS system based on Modbus protocol, but we can do the same using also other protocols and using different vendors, Siemens or Rockwell or Phoenix or ABB or BNDAR, back off as you prefer, because there is no, usually, encryption, there is no authentication in the protocol, all the data are exchanged in plain text, there is no mechanism that validate the data coming from some devices and I can reach my device, my PLC, or SCADA system, and can send this fake data to change the behavior of the plant. And so what? Last two slides. We can do something. We can make it safe, starting from organizational measures, security assessment. We have to know that there is a problem if we want to solve the problem. And how to know if we have a problem? We start validating and measuring our, or doing a security assessment to validate our infrastructure, to validate the security posture that we have in plant and IT domain. We need to have an approach oriented to cyber risk, specifically using training and standard for IT, for OT and ICS domain. And we have to implement 
process and procedures and policies for the cybersecurity. Uh, OT guys don't like to use cybersecurity, to have cybersecurity, because they have to produce. But the problem is absolutely a, uh, to transfer to aware people how is important the roles that, you, that they have in the cybersecurity plant during an attack. Technically speaking, asset inventory and discovery and vulnerability scanning. Asset discovery is a very important phase. In a production plant, you have a huge amount of device that you don't know to have. For example, a very simple device that uses IoT, a microscopy, electronic microscopy, electronic instrumentation. Uh, it's the kind of the situation that has inside some very basic IoT or an embedded system connected with an IP address that can be used by attacker to extend or to to move lateral to, to perform the lateral movement and reach the most important part of the network. Network segmentation and monitoring, endpoint protection, specifically developed for OT device uh, with la targeting legacy computer targeting very low resource use use of resources uh, that doesn't need for example a restart to update the adr database and so on secure programming of plcs patching recovery plant and secure remote access there is a standard that is called iec 62443 are developed by the vendor, right, wrote by the vendors, most important vendors in, in ICS domain, that describe how to reach a security level from one up to four, depending on the critical infrastructure or critical plant that you have, and suggest a, in deep detail how to implement the cybersecurity in the plant, in the network, in the device. Uh, I see the standard that describes also how to implement is a physical device in, inside the PLC, inside the industrial IoT. The chapter four of the standard describes how to implement credential or all the stuff, secure boot and all the process that is required to secure your industrial components. But if you don't have the chance to change or to protect your device directly, to update your PLC. What you can do? We can put a wall around your device in order to protect, in order to have a zero trust access, especially for remote access. And then absolutely mandatory to use OT appliance. If you put a, a standard firewall the firewall, a standard IPS or a standard IDS, this device is not able to do a deep packet inspection of the industrial protocols. Modbus TCP or Profinet or OPC UA or I don't know which kind of protocol. It's not able to, to do, to learn, to have a, a basic line of the, of the behavior of your network. So if you, if you want to, subdivided to protect an OT network, you have to use specific product for this domain. Able to do a deep packet inspection, able to protect your device, to block some, for example, some data that are outside the range of the parameter that you define in your plan in order to prevent the flooding attack that I show you in my video. I'm, I was able to change the behavior of the plant changing the data inside the register of the PLC. If you have a, a good IPS for OT domain, you can restrict the access. You can define which kind of a source IP can write in the desk IP and in which range some register can be exchanged, can be modified to prevent flooding attack, to prevent or, uh, other, uh, other kind of attack that you can have in the OT domain. Last but not least, or least but not last, if you think technology can solve your security problem, then you don't understand the problem and you don't understand the technology. I don't know. 
this guy is Bruce Schneider, the third project father. I think it's a good approach because the problem in cybersecurity, the first problem is human behavior. That means no technology can solve the human behavior. Changing the mind, maybe, replacing the, the brain with a hardware brain, but the problem is then hardware brain can be vulnerable. It can be pen tested by some guys. Okay, thank you. I hope that my presentation was interesting for you, especially after lunch. If you have a question, it's a good time now. If you can reach me by mail, by Twitter, or touch my shoulder after the presentation. Thanks so much. Come on.